Hi everybody, Jo here again. How are you doing? I hope you're doing okay. Thanks for joining me today. And I thought we'd have a play with some of our Versafine Claire inks and we're going to be stamping in different colours just because I thought we haven't done that for a while and it's nice to do something a bit different. So we're going to stamp this um, lovely... I, say, I was going to say floral design, but actually there's quite a lot of foliage in the background. Um, we've just got one solitary poppy. As you know, I adore poppies. Um, so I had to bring the poppy in. Um, and I just thought we'd have some fun creating the design. Now, you can use any stamps. I have to say for me, my favourite bit was I went in my um, box of foliage stamps. Well, I got out so many. As always, I've got a pile of stamps on my desk. Now, I've stuck to about maybe six different stamps, but do you know what? I've got another, at least 12 different ones on here that I could do two other cards with. And that's what I love about this. So when I finished recording this and we've had a little play, do you know what? I'm going to make another couple of cards and maybe change my colour up a bit and just use some different stamps. And that's the beauty of Lavinia stamps. We have so many absolutely gorgeous ones. I don't know if you like me. You have a favourite, but then you have another favourite and then another favourite. And, you know, I mean, I have to say the orchard grass has snuck in. The field grass and the orchard grass do tend to sneak in. Um, anyway, so we'll make a start. I'm going to put that to one side so I can keep an eye on it and try and do something similar. Now, I've started off the Multi Fairies card. You can buy it in this lovely multi pack. And the great thing about this is it's ready cut, it's perfect. And I'm going to use one of the A6 pieces. This is just such a really good pack to have in. Now, again, with this design, you could just do it larger on one of the larger pieces of card. It's just such a lovely design that you can, you know, change it up as you see fit. And it is amazing how much look you can fit on just a small A6. I mean, look at that, that really is the size. By the time I've matted and laid on a complementing couple of pieces of um, card, added some splats on my card blank. You know, it's made a decent size card blank here, but look at that. Amazing what we can fit on. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start by just adding some colour in the background. And for this, I've gone for my Elements ink pad and it's the Violet Chalk. I just want to show you how we're going to make a basic background. And you know what? Again, if you had um, maybe a bit of time to spare in your craft room, but you didn't know what exactly you wanted to craft, you know when sometimes you've got half an hour or so and you don't want to start a big project? I would make some of these backgrounds because they'd be great to have in. I'm going to use my stencil brush and as always I'm going to pop just my stencil brush in the ink pad and then take some off on my mat but don't worry I'll be picking it up again I won't waste it and I've got my kitchen roll and I'm going to start in the corners because I always want my corners to be darker. I'm going to roll my sleeves up. Oh, I'm not the lamp. <laughs> I do keep telling you, don't I? One day you'll get a professional on here. Right, so I'm just going to start by flicking a little bit of colour on the corners. And don't worry too much about wanting perfect blending. You're just adding some colour. And then with whatever's left on your brush, just come down the side. Turn your card, pick a little bit more up. And again, flick on the corner and down the side. Lovely and easy. Same thing, pick up on the corner and down the side. I think I just want a bit more on there. And as I say, it's a nice easy thing to do. No pressure. Corner and down the side. And you will get a lovely blend with these brushes. So let's have a look. And as I say, I do want my corners deeper. That top corner needs to be just a bit deeper for me. There we go. I'm happy with that. And what we're going to do now is bring in one of our circle masks. 
And again, for those of you who are new, because I know we have new friends and followers all the time, the circle mask, because the acetate, obviously they're see-through. So I put a little dab of either acrylic paint or Posca pen on mine, just because I find it easy when I put it down that I know where it is and it's easier for me. Because with them being see-through, I do tend to lose them a lot. So I'm going to just put my circle mask on and I don't want it in the middle. I'm just the sort of person, if something's in the middle, it would have to be perfect in the middle and I'm not good at that. So for me, it's easy to offset it. I just find it looks better and it's easier. So again, ink on my craft mat here. And even though I've put it on my craft mat, I'm still going to put it on the mask first and then just gently flick and come all the way around. Just check you can see what I'm doing. Again, just move your fingers a little. And we're just going to flick. We just want a nice little, maybe a bit more to the sides, as though it's like the wispy, you know, the, um, the clouds just wisping across the sun or the moon. Not sure what this is. There we go. And I'm happy with that. Now, I'm going to put my brush down. I've got my fan brush in my pot of water and what I'm going to do is just pick up this little bit of ink on here and I'm just going to flick it. Now what I would do at this point is get my card blank but I must, I must confess I didn't get a spare card blank out and I would flick some colour on my card blank as well. I just tend to do opposite corners, I like opposite corners and then what we're going to do is just with a cloth clean this up and always clean your, your circular mass and then Mr Inky Binky let's dry this and dry my mask and then put that away. I always try and sort of tidy up as I'm going along just because for me it, it just helps. I just find the more the tidier I can be the better. Now I'm just going to use my heat gun just to dry this off a little. Again, it's multifarious card so it takes water well. That'll be fine, don't need to dry it much. And then on to our stamping. Now what it did We'll put the violet chalk to one side. I had a look at my VersaFine Claire ink pads and I looked for any colours that I thought would go with sort of purpley tones. And I found I've got the Monarch, which is a beautiful purpley colour. So I knew I wanted to use that. But I want to stamp in different colours, you see. So I, I put that to one side. And also I've got Fantasia, which is almost like a purpley blue. So I got that one out. Twilight. Now that's a blue blue. So I'm thinking that might give a nice contrast. Sort of bring in the blue side of the purple. And then when I was looking, I also I've got morning mist. Now I was mindful, I thought that might be nice for the orchard grass because that's such a lovely fine um stamp. And I thought the, the grey might just complement that well. And I know it seems silly, but I've also got Golden Meadow. And I went for that because I didn't, I thought if I do too much just purple and blue, it may just look almost a little bit dull. So I wanted a bit of almost um, brightness and contrast in there. So I got my Golden Meadow. And if I bring the finished card, you can see that just having that bit of colour, and also it gives me an accent colour for when I'm at and layer. But again, that's just the way my head works. And that's just the way I looked at this. And as I say, I just wanted to use some of my VersaFine Claire's because every time I put an order in with Tracy, I order a colour I haven't got. But it's no good just ordering them and putting them on your shelf. Now, I know, I bet you're there shaking your head or nodding because I don't know about you, but I tend to do that. And... I have quite a few things on my shelf, to be honest, that looked good and I ordered and, you know, they stay there. So it's important to get them out. So maybe this is a good time for you to look at your VersaFine Claire ink pad, see if there's any colours you haven't used and maybe have a play. Also, look at your stamps. Are there any stamps you haven't used? Now, for example, the first one I'm going to use is this Fernhead. Now, again, I haven't used this for a long time. 
so it was one of the first stamps I bought so hence that one's coming out to play I'm going to put it on my Lavinia block and this one I'm going to do in my um, golden meadow so we've got that brightness just to start off with and again I'm just stamping on the side because I find it easier to do it that way and I'm going to pop one right in the moon there so it's a nice focal point and again to anybody who's new this is just a pile of copy paper and an old craft magazine just because for me I find it easier to stamp with this underneath you can get stamping mats um, but it's whatever you know however you find if you don't need anything if you're happy you know a, ha a happy little stamper and um, just stamping straight on your card that's that's fine you would go with whatever's good for you me no not so good i need i don't know if it's my safety net it's funny isn't it how we have these things so just going to use my damp cloth on my stamp and again for me I know there's a lot of you out there that don't clean your stamps which is fine for me I just find if I don't I get ink on my fingers and then I'll get it on my card but again you go with whatever suits you now the next stamp is another one of my favourite seed heads and this is when again you get them out and you find yourself saying oh it's another favourite another favourite now the beauty of this if you haven't got this one is we have a solid stamp and then one that's gorgeous to colour in now this if you fancy some colouring in it's a lovely stamp to add colour to but I'm just going to go for the solid stamp and if I remember right let me think I think I'm going to use the monarch on this one and we're going to bring those purpley tones in I'm thinking let's have one there and again I'm not stamping all my stamps at the same level and I'm stamping at different angles as well because in this meadow you know depending on the sun and and the weather they're not all going to be pointing straight up are they and also we may have we don't want them regimented so we don't want it sort of symmetrical and in order so I'm thinking let's have a clump because when you do go down the fields or you go in the meadows, as I often do with Eric, you do find, don't you, that you get clumps like this. So the more natural we can get our designs to look, I think the almost the better they will be. And I will just have one there. I think that will balance it up. And I'll just turn it round so we can have a look. So I like that balance. So that was the, the monarch. I hope I'm saying that right. So again, a quick wipe and a clean, and then that can go back. Best way not to lose your stamps is to always put them back. Now for me, the star of the show is the group Poppies. And this is the one. And I just want to tilt the head a little. And I've done it the wrong way. I always have to, I'm no good at this. I have to think which way. So remember, you can just tilt it. And I'm thinking, yeah, I like that there. Now, I think I may go the Fantasia for this. And let's just pop that there. Yeah, I like that. And don't worry at the bottom, we'll we'll stamp something over that. But yes, I like that. Now, I need a little spare piece of card. She says, do you have spare bits of card everywhere like I do? And I'm just going to stamp the head again on my poppy so I can decoupage it. Yeah, there we go. So we'll pop that to one side. We'll pop that back now on this group poppage you've got these lovely seed heads so i'll bring in my smaller block i'm just happy with the smaller block for the smaller stamps and then we'll just in the same color let's have a look i 
there. And then let's just have another one. I know, let's stamp it over that. Do you know what? Oh, I'll put one over there because these do see, don't they? And they pop up and look, we've got a space there. And I think, let's have a look. Yeah, the poppy seeds of, yeah, I like that. In my head, they've blown and they're over there. Now, I must admit, we've got a lovely lavender stamp that I got out to use, but I didn't use it on my original. Again, you don't want to overcook it. I think sometimes you do have to almost rein yourself in. So I've put that to one side for another card. But I am going to use one of the Silhouette Foliage, she thinks. And what should we do? Should we go with the blue with this? Let's have a look. Twilight, I think. Let's bring a bit of twilight in. And especially at the bottom, I think this will really ground the design. Yeah. And I love the leaves on this. And again, we don't want too much. Let's just... See, I don't want to lose those poppies. So I'm just going to put it lower because I like those seed heads. And it's all about building up the design, making it look nice and complete, but without overcomplicating it and making it look like you've just thrown everything at it. You know what I'm like with my pizzas? There's a fine line with a pizza. Remember, you can always do second generation if you wish. Right, I like that. But I have to say, there's something lovely about stamping in your silhouette stamps with your, your coloured inks. Now, lastly, I think we'll come in with the orchard grass, which I did put carefully to one side. Oh, there we go. You know what happens? That one side could be anywhere. And like I say, I'm going to use the morning mist, a grey for this. So it just looks sort of wispy. And I just like to sort of frame. So I always like to put a little bit of stamping up the side. Now we have got the field grass, which is a larger version of this, which you could use. But for this one, I just fancy bringing in a little bit of the, the orchard grass. Where do we think? A little bit there. And then I think just one more there in that gap. So again, we've got that. Yes, I don't want any more. It's that thing of walk away. So let's just block that. I'll move that out of the way. So that's built up beautifully. Now, I'm not going to add anything in the sky, but we have got the gorgeous butterflies, little dragonfly. Now, they would look lovely, wouldn't they, in the sky? I just want to add a little bit of colour to this poppy. So I'm just going to get my violet chalk, a little bit on my mat look. Get my watercolour brush. And I know we're going to decoupage it, but I like to add colour to my original card as well just in case you see any of it underneath. So we'll add a little bit of colour there. And for me, this is just such a lovely way of adding colour. Nice and quick and it'll all blend in tone on tone. And what's nice about the Elements ink pads, look, when you add the water, it doesn't obliterate that lovely detail that Tracy's given you. So if you look, you can still see all that beautiful detail through the colour. Now, I just want it a little bit darker at the base. So I'm going to come in at the base, just where we would have it darker, because obviously the base of the flower, that's where you get the darker colour. And we'll clean that up with the Inky Binky. Now, that's looking nice, but we need it to look a little bit better, don't we? So we need to frame it. So we're going to come in with a blending. Now, again, you could use a sponge, you can use foam. It's what whatever suits you. And I'm going to come in with an oxide just because you can mix your elements, your oxides, the dye base inks. But it was the colour I wanted and I wanted some seedless preserve. Now, this is going to look quite strong, but bear with me. I have a plan. 
Again, I'm always going to take some off on my mat and I'm going to start on the bottom corner because if it is too thick, that um, a darker colour will ground it anyway. I'm going to come in on the corner and just work my way round. And I always pick the ink up on the corner, work my way up. Corner. Now, I don't want to go much over this look, so I'm just going to lightly where the moon is and then onto the corner and down the side. Now, I'm going to put the lid on my ink because I don't want any more ink and I don't want to dab my, um, put my blending tool in it. But what I do want to do is just where I've got blending here. So almost on my first lot of blending, I've not paid too much attention where I've gone. I've just added the ink. Now I'm going to almost be mindful. I want to blend up to where the moon is there and I'm not adding any more ink. I'm just using what's on my blending tool. And this at the bottom here, look, I just want to give that haze of colour and that's why it was important to um, blot our stamping. And there, just blend it up so I've got that lovely haze. And then round my poppy here. And then just a little bit in the sky. Just bring in, I'm just moving what's there. There we go. And I, I like that. Now, once again, you could leave it like this, but I just want to add this lovely, lovely mottling, this faux bleaching here. Now, a little tip, if you weren't happy with your blending, it's a great way of hiding the fact you're not happy with it. So again, my fan brush is in my pot all the time. I'm just going to take a little bit of the water off and then I'm just going to flick around the edges now, don't be frightened because your stamping has all been done in permanent ink, your VersaFine Clair, your permanent ink, it will only faux bleach your dye-based ink. So look at that already, you're starting to get that effect. So while that's faux bleaching, we'll just mop up this colour and we'll, again, clean and tidy space. Get Mr. Inky Binky on it. Now, if you didn't want it to look any whiter, just come in with your kitchen towel and dry it off. Now, again, you could use your heat tool, but to be honest, just the kitchen towel for me will dry it off enough. Now, I've already cut out my poppy head look, just to say if you didn't want to see me cutting out, so I've cut one out there. And now it's the time for the finishing tricks. And what we're going to use, you could use a white gel pen on here. But because of the golden tones, I thought it would be nice to use my gold signal. And what I'm going to do is where I've got the moon look, I'm just going to add some highlights. So again, on these lovely, oh look at those. And then on our poppies. Now the moon, the light shining this way, so it'll just catch this side look. So again, we'll just catch down here. And a little bit on the poppy, just on this side. And this will catch this side, won't it? Because it's shining this way. Just a little something to think about. Again, I just think it looks nicer if we get the correct... And it, for me, that just adds that nice little bit of sparkle. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. I really need a cameraman here, don't I? <laughs> and then on our little poppy, I think we'll just add a little bit of sparkle at the top. Look, there we go. And as I say, for me, that just finishes it off. Now, the sentiment, again, what I'm going to do is for this, I've gone my blessings. Now... Again, you can use your acetate to see what sort of blessing. But I've got to be honest, for me, like I've told you before, I stamp out lots of my spare bits of card with my blessings. Now, I have stamped this out in the Monarch. And I'm just going to cut it out. And again, I find the bigger pair of scissors. I mean, you could use your paper trimmer. But I've got to be honest, for me, scissors are just so much quicker. Let's file that in the bin. And then 
for me this would stand out a little bit too much so what I'm going to do is with my blending tool and look how much ink's left on it and this is a great way of using up again that ink that's left and this way I can just glue these on let me just find my I'm just going to use my 3D glue so as I say that the word happiness is from the blessings and on the blessing set we've got hope happiness and faith I mean often at home this sort of generic design is a design that I would leave probably without a sentiment which is why I tend to stamp a lot on spare card and then whenever I need a card I've got a card ready and I just add the sentiment before I send it so I'm using a 3D glue, this is a pin flare, just so that it gives me a little bit of, um, well, 3D, so it gives me some nice depth there. Now again, let's have a look, happiness, what do we think? Oh, I think it looks nice there, doesn't it? Yeah. So again, we'll just, and I think this will be a nice card for a friend who I know is just struggling at the minute, and I think this will just cheer her up. I know recently I got some lovely cards off lovely friends and they made such a difference. You know, it's important to send cards. I think in this day of, you know, technology, we do a lot on social media. Actual seeing a card, I think, is, is there's something lovely about handling a card. Right, always pop the end up with your pin flare. And that's it, really. So I just think what a, a pretty design. And as I say, it's just nice for a change to be stamping and getting my VersaFine Claire inks out. So I've got a little bit of matting and layering ready. So I can pop that there to show you. So again, look at the difference, difference that that makes. I mean, you could always, if you wanted, you don't have to put your sentiment. You could, if I just bring this in, if we just pretend, look, that that's your card blank. Let me turn it round. You could pop that there and actually stamp your sentiments here. And again, I think that would look nice. Have you seen this? It's amazing how many of the back of my cards have. I now actually flick um, ink across because chances are it's got ink on anyway. <laughs> so if I bring those both in, you can hopefully, you can get an idea what we've made today and the one I created earlier. So I'm hoping that gives you a little bit of inspiration and maybe it gives you a chance to look some floral um, stamps out and get your VersaFine Claire ink pads out and have a go at stamping and, and just seeing what you come up with. So I'm hoping you enjoyed that. Thank you as always and thank you for your comments. Honestly, it's lovely. I really do appreciate them. You all take care. Much love and hugs from me. Bye for now.